Hey guys, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com. I make videos all about making mom life simple. And if that sounds like something you would like to see more of, hit subscribe down below and ring the little bell next to it so you'll be notified when the next one comes out. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to start meal planning. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about why meal planning is a challenge for so many moms and how it can help you if you start doing it. Meal planning used to be a huge challenge for me before I figured it out because I never seemed to have time to meal plan and I would always spend time trying to figure out what I felt like making in the evening. And even if I did figure out what I wanted to make, I didn't always have the right ingredients to go with it. When I would try to meal plan, I would stick with it for maybe a week and I felt like I just spent so much time meal planning that it didn't really make it worth it and it didn't save me any extra time in the long run. The reason meal planning can be such a challenge is because as moms, we have to make so many decisions throughout the day. Just look at when you go to the grocery store. For each item on your list, there are probably at least 10 different options, especially if it's a packaged item like toilet paper. It's not just one item that you go and you pick up. You have to look at the prices. You have to look at the quality. You have to decide which is the best decision for your family. And that's just one tiny little decision in your day in a litany of others that you have to make to make your house run properly. So when it comes to figuring out what your family is going to eat for dinner, it feels like just one more decision and it can be exhausting by the time you get to that point in the day and you really don't want to think about one more thing or have one more decision to make. But if you can figure out a way to meal plan that works with you and your family, when you get to that point in the day, the decision has already been made for you. You can think of meal planning like making decisions now for your future self when your future self really doesn't wanna make decisions the most. It may take a little bit of time at first to get into the habit of meal planning and the routine of it, but once you do, it will make your life so much easier that you will never go back. So in this video, I am going to show you the simplest way to meal plan that anyone can stick with. And I'm even going to show you my number one secret for how I meal plan my entire year every December. The first thing that you want to do when starting a meal plan is to have a realistic goal. It can be tempting when you first sit down to make your meal plan to look at Pinterest and come up with all kinds of different elaborate meals, gourmet meals, special diet meals, everything that you've been thinking, oh, I really should start cooking like this more often. And what happens when you do that is that meal planning becomes even more overwhelming because not only are you starting to meal plan, but you're also doing an entirely new way of cooking. So when you're starting a meal plan, start with just the meal plan. Don't try to change a diet during this time. Don't try to make more gourmet meals or anything like that. Start really simple and have your first goal just to be to stick with the meal plan. The second thing you need to do is get all your gear ready. I like to use the Amy Knapp Big Grid calendar for my meal planning because every single day of the year has a dinner menu option on it. So when I am going through and planning out my whole year, all I have to do is flip through my calendar and put exactly what meal I'm going to cook on that day down. If you don't have this calendar though, you can also get my meal planning workbook and that has everything you need in it to get started meal planning along with grocery lists. I will leave a link in the description down below if you want to grab that and download it real quick. The other thing you can do if you don't have either of those options is just grab a notebook and a pen. It really doesn't have to be too complicated. Just grab anything that you can write with and something to write it down on. Number three, choose the duration of the plan that you want to create. Like I said before, I actually plan out my entire year of meals every December, but I know that's not for everyone. A lot of people like to do a two week meal plan or a monthly meal plan. You can also try seasonal meal planning and I will leave a link in the description down below if you would like some more information about that. Basically, pick a duration that works well with your personality. If this is your first shot at meal planning and you aren't exactly sure how it works or if you'll be able to stick with it, I recommend starting small. Start with a two week meal plan, a four week meal plan, or maybe even a six week meal plan if you think you can stick with it for that long. One little secret is that if you do a two week, four week or six week meal plan and you just don't feel like doing a meal plan again when that one is done, just start over at the beginning and keep using it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time you sit down to plan your meals. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to choose your weekday breakfast. 
In our house, we eat the exact same thing for breakfast six days a week, and that is oatmeal. Usually we will mix it up with different fruits or nuts or seeds, things like that put inside it. But other than that, it is basically the same six days a week at our house. The reason we eat a quick, healthy breakfast every day of the week is because we generally want to get on with our day or we have some place that we need to go. Generally in the morning is when we go and run errands if we need to, or we go to church, things like that. So we want to make sure that we can get out of the house on time and if you have a more elaborate breakfast, everything from the prep to the eating to the cleanup just takes more time. If you go simple, you will be able to get out the door much more quickly. If you do like those fancy breakfasts though, that doesn't mean you can never have them. In our house, we go to church on Saturday, so on Sunday, we actually have a much slower morning. So my husband and the girls both get up and they make a time intensive, fancy, elaborate breakfast almost every Sunday morning. It's a lot of fun to have a special brunch together and it makes those meals even more special when they're saved for a special occasion as opposed to eating it all throughout the week. Number five, the next step in creating your meal plan is to make lunches easy. Often when you start meal planning, it can be really tempting to go elaborate breakfast, unique lunch, and exciting dinners. And when you're sitting down with the cookbooks, it seems like a really great idea. The problem comes in when you actually have to prep and prepare and cook all of those meals. You just spend a lot of time in the kitchen and it can get very discouraging. So what we do in our house is we eat leftovers every single day of the week for lunch. If we don't happen to have leftovers, then I will make something easy. Something like a sandwich or a salad or haystacks, which is like a taco salad that we eat a lot. Basically anything that can be quickly made and quickly cleaned up. But I highly recommend making leftovers for lunch a routine in your house. And I will leave a link below also on how to incorporate leftovers into your routine. But that is one great way to make sure that you aren't wasting food and to make sure that your lunches are easy and predictable. Number six, plan for afternoon snacks, especially if you have children. This is not something that I plan out specifically every single week, but I try to have on hand some nuts and fruit and some vegetables, and the girls can generally choose whatever they want. And since I choose what we eat for dinner, they really like the opportunity to pick what they're going to eat for their snack. Number seven, plan for a family favorites night. When you're planning out your dinners, if you start with your favorites, you're more likely to stay motivated to continue with the meal plan. Our family favorites are what I call build it meals. And that is any meal where each person builds their own plate of food. So an example of this would be hot dogs or burgers or burritos or nachos. Anything where each individual person makes their own creation out of the meal. Now, when we have our family favorite night, we do not eat the exact same thing every week. You could easily do that if your family favorite is one specific dish. But for us, we like a variety of meals under that category of build it meals. So one week we may have hot dogs, the next week burgers, the next week nachos, and so on. But having that umbrella of family favorites or the build it meals makes it really easy to plan the meals that go on Friday nights. And that leads me to number eight. And this is the biggest secret for meal planning. That is having a theme night for every night of the week. So for example, in our house on Thursday night, we eat leftovers every single Thursday of the year. But that makes it really easy to plan when we are going to eat leftovers and what goes on every Thursday night's meal plan. And the reason that I chose Thursday is because Miss Claire typically has swimming lessons on Tuesday and Thursday night. So I knew I needed to have an easy, quick go-to meal for Thursdays. So when you are looking at your theme nights, make sure that it matches up with your life and your schedule. You can do anything you want though as a theme night. If your family really likes casseroles, have a casserole night of the week. Or if your family really likes pizza, have a pizza night every week. It can be anything you can dream of and it will make your meal planning so much easier because instead of having every meal that has ever been cooked as a possibility when you're setting your meal plan, now all you have to do is find a pizza that you wanna make that week or a casserole or a build it meal. And it just narrows down your choices so, so much. I wanna do a theme night ideas video for you, but I think for now you can come up with some good ideas on your own. And please leave your theme nights down below in the comments so that other people can see them and get some ideas for their meal plan. Number nine, decide if you want to do new recipes. 
When creating a meal plan, it can be really tempting to just put a whole bunch of new recipes on your calendar, but I would discourage you from doing that every night of the week because when you're trying a new recipe, it just takes more time and energy and attention and generally more money at the grocery store because you may not have everything on hand. What I do is I have every Wednesday night as our new meal night. And every Wednesday on the calendar, I put a new meal that we are going to try that week. If you don't really like trying new meals, you don't have to have any new meals on your meal plan. But if you want to, I suggest you pick a specific day for trying new meals. Number 10, now that we have our weekday meals figured out, we are going to look at what types of meals we should do on the weekend. And when you're deciding this, make sure you look at what a typical weekend feels like for your family. Are you usually rushing from one thing to the next, from practices to games to music recitals? If that's the case, look at some good box lunch options or maybe even schedule going out to eat on a specific day of the weekends. If your weekends are a little bit more relaxed, Maybe try some of those time intensive recipes or even have your new recipes be on the weekend when you have a little bit more time. One of our favorite things to make on Sundays is homemade pasta from scratch. It's something fun that our girls love to do and it creates really special memories around taking more time cooking together. Number 11, write down a shopping list. Now, when you're writing down your shopping list, make sure you are doing it at your house so that you can check and see if you actually need to buy things for each recipe. When I make my shopping list, I always do it at home and I go through every item and I check to see if I have it and how much I have before I put it on my list. I really don't like wasting money and if I buy something I already have, it's just kind of a waste of money because I could have used what I had instead of buying something new. So make sure you shop in your pantry, in your fridge, in your freezer before you put something on your list. Now, once you've written the list, make sure you take it to the grocery store and you use it at the grocery store and you don't buy a lot of extra things that aren't on the list. And this will save you so much money on groceries. If you would like more ideas on how to save money on groceries, I will leave a link down below. I have a full post of 37 different ways to save money on groceries. So you can check that out if that's one of the reasons that you are getting into meal planning. But having the list is a big, big way to save money on groceries. And the last thing to do when you're starting a meal plan is to just have fun. Don't stress out too much if you try a new recipe and it didn't work out, or if you need to rearrange some of your theme nights. Most likely that's gonna happen. I know the first few times that I tried out the meal plan, it didn't work perfectly. I planned way too many new meals and I ended up with theme nights that we didn't really love, so I switched it the next time around, and it was no big deal. Just have some fun with it. Get your family's feedback too. See if they like it or if they have suggestions for a new theme night or a new meal. And just try to enjoy the process, and it will get easier, I promise. Don't forget to leave your comment down below with the theme nights that you are excited to put into your meal plan. Hit subscribe and ring the little bell if you would like to see more videos on making mom life simple. I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I will see you on the next one.